Now next term is uh, germ layers. First, uh, 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 I'm going to discuss how germ layer is formed and what are they. During fertilization, sperms and ovum unites and form a diploid structure, zygote. Zygote undergoes successive division to form a solid ball-like structure called morula. Then morula, a cavity it develops inside morula. When this cavity develops inside morula, the structure is now called blastula. This, this cavity is called blastocell. During gastrulation, these cells of morula shows movement. They move to their respective place to form two or three layers. During gastrulation movement, if two layers are formed, the animal is called as diploblast. These two germ layers are ectoderm and endoderm. Representative of diploblastic animal is Nidaria and Tenophora. In Nidaria and Tenophora, mesoderm is absent. In rest of the animal phyla, that is platyhelminths onward, all animal phyla, three germ layers are formed between gastrulation movement. The third germ layer, which is formed, called mesoderm, which is absent in uh, diploblastic uh, phyla. So, on the basis of germ layer, we divide animal kingdom into two groups, diploblastic and triploblastic. Silom. As I discussed first, stilom is a space between body wall and elementary canal. But for calling a space as true stilom, it must be lined by the cells of mesoderm. Now in diploblastic phyla, since mesoderm is absent, so they are naturally acylomate animal. Acylomate means they do not have a true stilom. Acylomate means mesoderm is absent. But platyhelminth is the first phyla where mesoderm arises first because platyhelminth is first triploblastic phyla and in triploblastic phyla uh, mesoderm is present. Still they are acylon. Why? This is because of presence of parenchyma cells in between mesoderm and endoderm. There is no space. Mesoderm is present but space is absent. Because of absence of space, platyhelminth is also called as acylomate animal. So, first four phyla of animal kingdom are acylomate. Next come to nematodes. Nematodes are representative of pseudocylomate animal because they are plati like platyhelminths, they are also uh, triploblastic, that means ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm are present, but no parenchyma cells. So, a space is present, but the space is not lined by mesoderm on both sides. One side is lined by mesoderm, other side is lined by endoderm. So, this space is not tosilom, but because the space is present in between two layers, it is considered as pseudo. Pseudo means false silom. Rest of the phyla of animal kingdom, that is, any leader onward, all animal phyla are truly silomate, that is, eusilomate animals. And eusilomate animals are of two types, cesocilomate and cesocilomate and enterocilomate. Now, how does cesocilom is formed? During formation of cesocilom, a single layer of mesoderm splits into two layers. One, uh, this, this is mesoderm, this is also mesoderm. Now, look this space. This space is lined by mesoderm on both sides. So, when a stilom is derived by splitting of mesoderm into two layers, this type of stilom is called a cesocilomate animal. And representative phyla, representative phyla, I discussed first. Anelida, Arthropoda, and Mollusca are cesocilomate. Next group of truly silomate animal, which is called as enterocilomate. Entero means it develops from enteron. And enteron refers to gut. The gut of embryo is called enteron. This is enteron. Enteron is form of endoderm below and mesoderm on upper side. Now, a pouch like structure develops from mesodermal cells, these pods get separate from enteron 
and ultimately they get fused. Now a space develops inside. The space is lined by mesoderm on both sides. Because this stellum is derived from enteron, that's why called enterostellum again. Enterostellumate phyla are last three phyla of animal kingdom. This echinodermata, hemichordata, and chordata. 